and welcome to Let's Replay. I'm Ellie Gibson. I'm joined today by Eurogamer's Martin Robinson. Hello. Hello. How are you? You have to excuse Martin's uh, slightly dishevelled appearance, but he's just got back from a, a business trip to San Francisco. That is true. Haven't you? Yeah, and he is a, a middle-aged hipster. So anyway, <laughs> uh, Martin, what are we playing today? We are playing uh, Metal Gear Solid, the 1998 PlayStation original um, Yokozuna. Well, you say original, Martin, uh, but it's not the first Metal Gear Solid game, is yeah, it? You yeah, were I mean, telling me earlier before we started. Some people think like Metal Gear Solid's the first uh, first game. But really, I mean, I've got to go back to Metal Gear. I go way back, and like I've got that on. I've got that on vinyl. You know, me, me and Metal Gear go way, way back. You Martin, haven't played Metal Gear, Martin? Uh, well, I played it a little bit, Martin, but um, yeah, like not for like years because I've just been so busy with the allotment and the, <laughs> and the knitting. Uh, Martin is the world's most hipster Metal Gear Solid fan, so uh, yeah, so we, we're, we're in for a treat, I think. So what's going on here? Uh, we are, and please don't laugh at this, we are Solid Snake, um, <laughs> and uh, Solid Snake is about to infiltrate Shadow Moses. Oh, it's all it's um, all kicking off. Yeah, read into that what you will. And so, yeah, here we are outside in the snowy Shadow Moses. The aim is to get into the base, which is a few screens away. I'm enjoying the alpine feel of this, but it's quite Tyrolean, isn't it? You have to expect Julie Andrews to pop up with that. She, I think, she is an unlockable skin, um, <laughs> as as she should be in most games. Absolutely. Uh, and so we can scope around and see what is what. Uh, yeah. There are air ducts up above. There are air ducts down below. There are air ducts everywhere, and there are also these guys who have got some amazing Primark oh, look at that. on. Are you? I think aren't they in Pussy Riot? I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, no, look at you. So why have you chosen uh, this game to play today? Uh, it seemed like a timely time to timely return to... Uh, <laughs> As I say, he's very jet-lagged. Uh, what? To return to Metal Gear Solid, seen as Ground Zeroes came out uh, not too long ago. Yeah. Um, and this, in many ways, feels... Uh, it's like a good time to go back to it because this is a very video gamey um, Metal Gear Solid. And as Metal Gear Solid progressed, it became more and more filmy. Um, video gamey and filmy. This is what I write about video games. Yeah, this is his professional. Just, just he's my, won an my, award. He's my won vocabulary award. is is uh, exceptional. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was going on in your life back in '98 when you uh, you got into this game? Uh, back then, '98, I would have been a um, I was a 17 year old squatty kid uh, who was obsessed with PlayStation and just like beating the crap out of other people in Street Fighter Alpha. Um, not in real life, but I was weedy as hell. Um, and so this, I remember when I actually bought this game, I went to Computer Exchange in Harrow and I tried to buy Rogue Vacation, which was like a really bad, um, a really bad vehicle combat game because they were like all the vogue of those days. But then the, um, the attendant said, don't buy this, you jerk. Uh, oh, this is going to go really badly. Did he actually call you a jerk? Were you in Saved by the Bell at the time? <laughs> uh, he said, yeah, yeah, don't buy this, um, get Metal Gear Solid instead because it's really, really good. Um, and at the time I took it home and it was a bit of a revelation because I didn't realise video games could be this cool basically So what was it about this game that blew your tiny 17 year old mind? Um, it's, it had like a real tangible story about real life things like admittedly in hindsight it's a bit trite it's about um, genetic modification about cloning of soldiers uh, at the time though it seemed like tangible quite edgy sci-fi mm. um, which was very different to basically the games I was playing at the time, which were beating the crap out of people or playing Sonic the Hedgehog um, until the early hours of the morning. Yeah. So I guess this was one of the first sort of more serious yeah. games in that sense. I th I mean, I, I, I'm going to posit, yeah. if you like that, posit, that, is a word. Uh, that video games um, have actually gone too far the other way now and they are too they take themselves too seriously. Yeah, yeah totally. So it's, it, it did feel like the first kind of serious game and in some ways it maybe kick-started that trend, which um, I, yeah games have got way too po-faced sometimes. Mm. Having said that, it's worth pointing out that there's this got a mean sense of humour Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm about to get What sorry. have you done, Martin? Martin! Uh, I have been spotted by... See how stupid they are? Is he going to spot me there? Just yeah, hide, just hide. He's not that stupid. Uh, it is basically just a pretentious game of hide-and-seek on <laughs> Metal Gear Solid, and that's what I'm doing right now. But you know what? Hide-and-seek is a great game. It so, is a wonderful game. You know, what's, what's so bad about that? Oh, Martin! Oh, there we go. Right, he's, he's going to get back up in a second. No, he's not. Come this on, isn't come going on. as slickly as I hoped it would. Well, you know, just do your best. Just do your best. It's all ah. that counts. Oh, Martin, have you ever played this game before, Martin? I don't think I have. Right, I'm going to throw a stun grenade. Let's get rid of this guy. Just do it. 
and then. Did you um, did you ever find this game sort of affecting your behaviour in real life? Did you spend so much time, <laughs> you know, crawling through tunnels that you ended up? I did spend a lot of time in air ducts in uh, in um, uh, in local places, but I was playing it at the time with my sister's boyfriend, um, and we were both kind of obsessed with it. Uh, to the point where once we went around a friend's house uh, and um, had a bottle of absinthe, which was all the rage back then. Um, oh yeah, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, everyone was really into it. And we tried to do the thing where basically you put some sugar in it and cook it, but then it went all wrong. We ended up Isn't making- Isn't that them, heroin? That is, it, we basically treated it like it was heroin. We ended up making a massive absinthe lolly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she then ate the whole thing. We went to get the train back from Chesham. Uh, and then I went and got on the train, turned around, he was gone, completely gone. I uh, had no idea where he went and about four hours later I heard him knocking on my door, on my window even, my bedroom window and he'd managed to sneak all the way back from Chesham to Amersham without being spotted once, inspired <laughs> by Solid Snake and then had climbed up to my bedroom window to, uh, to knock on and just, just to impress me and I was impressed I Metal was Gear impressed. Chesham, that's yeah. amazing <laughs> I want to play Metal Gear Chesham, that sounds brilliant yeah I think you could do also, like you could have a level like especially for girls where like you're a 17 year old girl uh, trying to nick uh, a Maybelline lipstick from Boots you know without being spotted by the security cameras and there is out. That, that is a theme in this game as well there is unlockable vas um, unlockable uh, Maybelline and, uh, and lipstick as well is that yeah. right yeah a series yeah. of collectibles basically you, you play makeup with uh, Snake ah. at the end of it Snake looks he looks he looks a treat by the well, end of the game maybe he's born with it yeah we may never know why is he called Snake is it is it because of Escape from New York? It's kind of... Kojima used to say it was because of Escape from New York until most recently when he just said uh, it's because he slithers around a bit like a snake. <laughs> so I, I don't know which one to believe. One of them is slightly more romantic than the other. So one of them is like saying, it, you know, it kind of wasn't my idea to have a ghoul character called Snake, but the other one is saying it was my idea, but it was inspired by something really rubbish. Yeah. yeah. No, that's, that's good. Have you ever interviewed Kojima? Uh, I have met him a couple of times, yeah, I met him at TGS last year and at Gamescom a few years beforehand. Um, I'm kind of intimidated because I love these games, mm. but he's a very he's a very cool customer. Yeah, I'm, see, I, yeah, I find it, I'm not a massive Metal Gear fan, um, I can obviously appreciate them, you know, intellectually. Mm. Yeah, right? Oh, yeah, 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 um, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I found even interviewing him, um, despite that, I find he's quite, he's quite a presence, isn't he? He's quite a sort of character. Yeah. In a, in a, yeah, it's a bit it's a bit unnerving, but you know he's just cool. Is basically what we're saying. He is really he's cool. cooler than us. He is way cooler than us, us. Uh, and he's saying. he also puts himself in these games quite a lot as well. Uh, he makes an awesome cameo in Ground Zeroes. Yeah, um, and he appears in this in a weird way. So at one point, you're fighting a boss, and the screen goes and it just flashes up with Hideo Kojima's name. Yeah, God knows why. Maybe he's just really egotistical. He's well, that's that's Kojima, isn't it? Yeah. In fact, oh, that gives me. I've got a great idea for a sitcom. Right, it's called. That's so Kojima. <laughs> it's just like him doing Kojima-like things. At the end of every episode, someone goes, that's so Kojima. What do you think? I love the idea. I absolutely love the idea. I'm going to pitch it to him, perhaps on Twitter. He likes taking pictures of his food on the Twitter, doesn't he? Yeah, he's, quite he's a surprisingly slender guy as well for someone who eats, who clearly just really enjoys his food. Yeah, no, he's good. There he is. He looked just like a snake then. Just, just like, like a, a just snake. Just like a snake. It's brilliant. Did you ever play Splinter Cell? Were you into that? I did play Splinter Cell. Um, they're kind of... Uh, coexist with each other. I'm not. I think this came first um, mm. and kind of inspired Splinter Cell. Uh, yeah. But Snake is Snake, you know. Snake is Snake. You can't take that away from him. Sam you could try. Just... You could try, but you wouldn't be having it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, true story. Actually, my uh, husband wanted to call our son Charlie. He wanted to give him the middle name Snake. Uh, yeah. That's delightful. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Uh, as I said to my husband, you know, we live in South East London. Imagine growing up in a playground uh, in South East London with the middle name Snake. That's not acceptable. And my husband said, well, no, 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 you've misunderstood me. We won't tell him his middle name is Snake until his 18th birthday. And then we'll reveal it to him. I think that makes it all worthwhile. I, that would be, for me, the ultimate 18th birthday present, to be told that I was named um, Snake. Uh, <laughs> Martin Snake <laughs> Robinson. It's got a ring to it. It's got a real ring to it. I think it's ridiculous. It's better than Keith, which is my uh, snake. Snake beats Keith in a fight. Well, that is what we actually called him. <laughs> really? No, it isn't. No. <laughs> I just thought I'd say that. <laughs> right, so what's happening now? Uh, now I am just screwing things up massively. And oh, I actually just died. Martin. But we will also get to hear the famous game over screen. Oh, yes. Which is basically Wonderful. them screaming snake over and over again, which would have been quite confusing for your 18 year old <laughs> son. Yeah, or, or a turn on. I don't know. It's weird. Um, 
Oh, we'll have another go, you know. I will have another go. I can't I can't promise I'm going to be successful, though, because it's been many, many years since I have played this. So, in terms of how this game stands up today, right, if I said to you, right, I'm going to knock you in the room for eight hours with either this game or Metal Gear Ground Zeroes, what would you choose? I really like this, because this is before Metal Gear Solid got overcomplicated, and before it's um, it just layered on more and more crazy story. Um and it's really pure, it's like a really pure game. It's basically hide and seek, it's basically Pac-Man. You're using just that mirror at the top and you're just escaping from the ghosts. Mm. Um, uh, but Ground Zeroes I really, really, really like as well because it's the most video gamey Metal Gear Solid since Metal Gear Solid. Mm. So I, that's, that's a cop out, I don't know. Yeah, again, professional Actually, no, video know, games you know, I, you know what, I go Metal Gear, original and the best. Really, yeah, really, yeah, yeah. That's, your, yeah. that's your Desert Island game. That's great. Um, what do you think is next for the Metal Gear Solid series? What would what I mean in an ideal world, would you like to see it return to this kind of? Yeah, that's what I'm because that's what I really enjoyed Ground Zeroes. I know a lot of people are upset because it's quite short, but for me, it was um, the most exciting evolution of the series since this game, since it went from two D to the uh, from the NES games to this, mm. and so yeah, I just wanted to be a video game again and not to just to have. I think Metal Gear Solid Four had the final cutscene in that game was ninety minutes long. Mm. And that was one of like two or three 90 minute cutscenes. I just feel that that's, you know. A bit unnecessary. Ollie's got, so actually, Ollie Welsh reviews editor. Ollie Welsh has a funny story. He um, he was reviewing Metal Gear Solid 4 at uh, a review event, and during one of the cutscenes, um, as you do, he just reached for his phone just to idly check Twitter, or Twitter wasn't even invented back then. Oh my Facebook. God. We were in MySpace. He was looking at his MySpace account. God, he's so old. <laughs> he's so old. <laughs> um, and yeah, and so he was just looking at his phone during this really boring cutscene, then he felt a presence behind him and looked around, Kojima was just there staring at him. <laughs> going, like, How dare you not appreciate my fine art, my fine cutscene. No way. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Does he appear, is he like the candy man? If you check Twitter too much, he just appears in your living room. We should try it. Um, I've actually, I've, so basically I need to get into the elevator, which is just down below, which I'm gonna try and do once I get past this camera. Yeah. So what what would you say was the the legacy of Metal Gear Solid? I mean, it's often sort of described as like the start of the stealth genre, or the thing that kicked it off. Would you is that a true assessment? Do you think? Yeah, I think it did. I, I think it, I'm sure someone would like pipe up and go, you know what? There's a stealth game beforehand. Um, yeah, I think you'll find that in 1982, Stealth Pong was invented. Yeah, exactly. Very little known game. It became a stealth game originally though, because I think he just Kojima couldn't the because on the NES back on the uh, original NES game. Um, it was just he couldn't basically have that many guns and that much action so he mm. just had to make it quiet and, and stealthy so yeah it kind of birthed the stealth genre in a way also f it was one of the first kind of po-faced really serious games mm. which has left a legacy which um, yeah for better and better from for worse it left a legacy in that in that fashion but as you, as you were saying earlier I think it's po-faced but with a sort of a wink every yeah, now yeah, and totally. again do you know what I mean it's sort of it never quite sort of pretends it's not a video game it yeah. never, it's not really trying to be a film it's it's trying to be a serious video game but really with a sort of wry sense of humour underneath it and I think it's that layer that has been lost by a lot of contemporary video games yeah it's got that and also and um, it does have these filmic pretensions but uh, in Metal Gear Solid in this one more than any other ones it really enjoys dicking with the player it's famously got the scene where um, you're asked to input a code uh, and then it says it says where and you're, like, you're asking where can I find this code where can I find this code it says oh it's on the back of the box mm. and back in 1998 again before we had internet as such or we didn't have like game facts I didn't we have barely had television it. no yeah. we didn't yeah and like, if I, I played it um, I played it in black and white um, and yeah I, we didn't know exactly what was going on so I spent two days trying to figure out what exactly was this back of the box and I looked at everything it turns out it's the back of a CD case the, um, the video game case you had to look on the back of that to find out the code which was very canny, I thought. That is, I believe, what the the modern term is meta. It that is meta. Is so meta. Meta Gear Solid. Ah, oh, that's take, it. You can take that one on tour. Oh, I think I don't think we can top that, Martin. I think we should probably leave it <laughs> I think there. You should leave it there. Uh, so yeah, Meta Gear Solid, Metal Gear Cheshire, whatever you want to call it, uh, Metal Gear Solid, great game. Thanks for showing it to us, Thank Martin. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye bye.